10 ways to defend leg strikes. Hello there, lovely sword people. Stefan and Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. And today we are going to go over 10 different ways to defend strikes to the legs. And what else to begin with that than everyone's favorite, which is footwork, of course. So if our opponent strikes to our leg, we could, of course, simply step back. And the most important thing is if you perform a body void, it's optimal to simultaneously perform a counter attack, okay? So either a strike to the opponent's hand, hat, or maybe even a thrust to the head, or in this case, without mask, to the body or to the flank. Okay, how does it look in reverse? If I, if, so we show it from, from both sides. Okay, so it's simply drawing the leg back and striking simultaneously. Okay, and this is a fairly huge motion and the Bonloni sources give us a couple of variations which are quite nice. So the next one is directly out of the Anonimo and is something 133 practitioners should be quite familiar with. And this is straightening out your knee, your front knee, to gain just a couple of inches. So you already see your measure and your feeling for measure should be really good. Okay, so if your opponent strikes the leg, this would strike it and this not. Okay, so you get a couple of centimeters. Again, you really need to be sure about your opponent in this case. And we'll look at some blade work, which makes this even a bit more safer later in the video. So this is uh, the second one. So pulling your knee back while simultaneously it's a body void striking to the opponent, either cutting or thrusting. The next one straight out of the Bolognese is the floating front leg. So if Stefan strikes me, I don't need to step back, but I could also just pull it closer to my back leg, floating in the air, so with the raised leg, and then I could go for another counter right in the tempo afterwards. So for example, one, two. One and two. Okay, and from the other side, floating leg and then stepping immediately in front to regain the measure towards your opponent. And this is especially useful if you're not that familiar with pulling back your leg, so with the body void and the simultaneously strike, because if I miss the counter attack on the first motion, I could still regain my measure with the second one. And in the, in the same kind of vibe goes the, first, uh, the fourth variant of our uh, defending the leg, and that is the changing step. We already practiced in another video of ours on three different kinds of footwork to surprise the opponent. And it's nothing else than pulling your front leg towards your back leg and then immediately stepping towards uh, forwards with the other one. So for example, goes something like this and this removes your, uh, this, this removes your leg from the threat of the opponent while for you regaining the reach immediately afterwards. So from the other side. <laughs> And you should, uh, it's of course, this, these are really slow leg attacks, so let's do it a bit more fluent. Okay, so you see there's a pulling back motion and then immediately an extension. Okay, so these are footwork variants. But what about blade work? If you can't hold your measure perfectly, maybe you're uh, uh, constrained by the space you have, or maybe you even just have a, an opponent which is really forward motivated, so he gains a lot of measure on you, you might need to actually parry these strikes to your leg. So if there comes a strike towards your inside, so for example, Stefan as a right-hander strikes a mandrito, a right blow to my knee, I could, of course, 
parry with the false edge. And it's important if you parry that you usually don't want to uh, pull back because then you lose range. Because you see this is a two tempo motion or two tempi motion, do it tempi, which is a parry followed by a counter attack. And if you pull back here and your opponent isn't static but pulls back after his attack as well, then you're out of reach for your repost. So I recommend you, if you parry, that you stay in reach. So even if your opponent pulls back now, you are still in range to counter strike, okay? So the false edge parry to the inside is quite common in the Bolognese sources because the nice thing is that your point uh, points into the direction of the blow, which leads to the opponent's sword sliding a bit up into your strong, making it fairly easy for you to then control their blade. Maybe you even have a buckler or something to control this and strike low, or you go around with the tramazzone or mandrito, or maybe even reverso. You decide. Okay, but you also can, of course, on your inside, parry with the true edge. And there are arguably two ways. The one is if you strike your own mandrito. So this could be Porta di Ferrolaga. This parry isn't seen in the Bologna sources as far as I'm aware, but we see it in uh, Giovanni Antonio Lovino, for example, which is another Italian Renaissance master just from Milan. So this parry is still possible. You should uh, pay attention towards that your point still points into the direction of the incoming blow. So if it's pointing away, this will break right through while it's pointing towards it. It has the same properties as the false edge parry we discussed right before. Okay. The bit, uh, the thing, the parry that's a bit more common is like the hanging parry with the true edge on your inside. So we can do this, uh, of course, like in a Guadi di Testa fashion, but if the bl uh, blow comes really low for you, you might need to push this around here, okay? And then from there you can again strike your Riverso, you can strike your Mandrito, your Tramazzone, as you like. And this is also one possible way to interpret Giovanni Della Gocchi's Falso Dritto. It's more like almost, he says you strike almost with the false edge. So it could be something which goes in the motion like this. So once again, and then you go around, okay? From the other side. So this is the, uh, in the Guadi di Testa or in the Forza Trito fashion. And then you strike around, okay. And once again. And the inside parry with the false edge, really with the false edge, okay. Which looks kind of the same. And with this true edge in Porta di Ferrolaga. Yes, okay. So these are the ones on our inside. Let's look at the two on our outside. And there we get again a true edge parry. This time in the fashion of a reverso ridoppio. Okay. That's the one that Giovanni della Rocchia, for instance, uses. And from here, you can either thrust, you can strike, or you even can pull further back and do an imbrocata over the sword. And once again, try to point your point into the direction of the incoming blow, okay? From the other side, so I strike Stefan with the reverso. Looks something like this. And then you can thrust in here or over the top, no problem. And we also have a false edge parry on our outside if we look at Marozzo's two swords. And that's a parry in Guardia di Fianco. So once again, with the reverso to my leg, here with the false edge, has the same properties, once again, pointing into the blow of my opponent. From here, it's a bit harder because I have a larger wrist motion to get around, but it's still possible to strike around, no problem. And from the other side, 
bit harder. Maybe even use your off hand to control the opponent's hand. Okay. So, true edge, false edge from the inside and outside. This makes four parries with the blade. We had four footwork variants. And now we mix it a bit up. So I said to you, especially if you go for this minimalist approach of just straightening out your knee, you might want to uh, use some precautionary blade work. And this is another possibility to interpret the false dritte of Giovanni Dalla Rocchia. And it's nothing else than a beat onto the blade of the opponent. So if Stefan strikes low, I push it downwards and in this way decreasing its range because, as you know, we have maximum reach on shoulder height and the lower we get, the smaller the reach is. It's more or less a circle around my shoulder and since I can't move the shoulder that much, my range describes like an ellipse. Okay, so if I beat the blade down, I gain a couple of inches more and then the straightening of the knee might already su uh, suffice, once again. And from the other side, so I, st uh, I strike Stefan. Okay, and you can do this with the forge edge. You can do this, of course, with the mandrito as well, or the reverso, doesn't matter from which side. And the very last one, so the tenth way to defend your leg is with uh, something that's called a transport, and that's not just a beat, but if the blow comes in, we stay in contact and get it all the way to the other side and then go either round or str uh, strike low once again. So something like this and once more or from the other side. So if you strike a reverso, yeah, yeah, you, you strike a reverso, sorry. So it's the same same method either from the from the left or from the right with the transport and fr totally from the other side sorry totally from the other side if I go here right or with the mandrito okay there you got the transport which is our tenth method to defend a strike to your leg okay we hope you enjoyed this little overview train hard train safe and until next time, ciao. Alles gut, alles gut, alles gut. Koordination. <laughs>